So I want to do a bit of a video narrative on uh, what's been going on here the last month or so. Um, so hang along here, it's, uh, uh, what, some big pounds here. Coming up uh, Saturday, I think it's uh, November 8th. And um, so we've been going along now since uh, October 2nd when I left Jamestown, Rhode Island. Um, I've sailed from Jamestown, Rhode Island to uh, Bermuda. Spent uh, about 10 days in Bermuda unexpectedly, but uh, that's what the weather window allowed us. And then uh, from Bermuda down to where we're at now. So, um, you know, Bermuda, Bermuda's back that way about 3,000 or 25, 2,600 miles. And beyond it, another 600 miles is Jamestown, Rhode Island. So about 3,000 miles back. And it's about 30 miles back there is the uh, equator. We passed that last night, um, right about uh, 22, 27 in the morning, or 22 hours, 27 minutes, not morning, but uh, at night, about 10.30 uh, last night. And uh, we're continuing on down. So the, our path has taken us through uh, um, the interesting uh, mix of weather systems in the North Atlantic around Bermuda and stuff, where we had very light winds and stuff. It didn't make much progress. Trying very hard to get ourselves as far east as we could. So when we came down this way and we came across these trade winds and stuff, we've been working in the last 10 days with all the squalls and swells and stuff, that we'd have a decent angle to cross them with and not have to fight too much. We didn't quite get as far east as we wanted to, but uh, certainly got farther east than we could have, and so it's not been, it's been a, a, a compromise in there, I guess. Um, so a couple of days, let's see. We've been in this stuff here for a solid 36 hours now. Uh, we're crossing these trade winds, which are the last of the trade winds from the north, uh, the, the trade winds from the North Atlantic. And uh, probably sometime later on today or tomorrow, we'll get into the trade winds that are starting to come uh, part of the South uh, Atlantic trade winds, which will have a little bit more um, southerly component in them, which will which will force us to steer a little more westerly, which we're trying to catch. Um, the bulge of Brazil. There's a, there's a big bulge of Brazil and we want to just slide by that bulge of Brazil. We don't want to get trapped up on the top up there and have to beat our way out to get back around it. So we've been trying to hold as far east as we can to come down through there. We're doing all right. I think we'll be okay. We'll see how it all pans out. We've got about 300 miles left to go to that point and um, it'll be about two days and uh, so that's all been good. So the, the but um, you know we had, were supposed to um, we hit these trade winds about 10 or 12 days ago and and busting through them and then we were supposed to get to an area called the doldrums but the doldrums uh, got overtaken by a, a, a squall system where for the last three or four days I just had to deal with probably three days I had to deal with a lot of squalls and it was really um, really kind of difficult it was not not a whole lot of fun we got a visitor here a nice little these are cricket birds they seem to fly around the boat and hang out with me. Make me feel more comfortable. I, uh, my good friend Mikey, we used to call a laughing gull. I think he sent them just to say hi and keep me comfortable when I get a little worried out here. So, as you can tell, it's been uh, been about five weeks of sailing now, and uh, I'm a little weary. And uh, this moment when I get a little anxious. Uh, late last night, I was really struggling to find the right uh, compromise between wave action and wind action in the boat slamming and trying to find comfort so I can get some rest because I get pretty tired and um, you sometimes mentally you think there's other people on the boat because you're used to us always being other people on the boat but uh, last night I got to a point to remind myself you know you're the only guy on the boat you're the only one who can take care of this and I uh, started, started to get into a, a, a real solo approach to things and it, it was um, a little, little stranger you know, a little, little different uh, I suppose I'll have more of those moments as this entire trip unfolds in front of me. That, uh, um, like I say, it's, you know, big adventures like this aren't aren't about doing them, but, but what you become having done them. So it's going to be interesting to, to to see what changes might happen in my uh, my outlook on life and perspectives on life. But all in all, it's been it's been interesting uh, as as the days pass. Um, the ones that, that I was anxious about, the, the anxious moments, the anxious storms, I seemed to, to handle them just fine. And uh, all the squalls, which had me a little little worried to begin with there. But uh, after two or three days, we auto driving and me handling the strings, we, we seemed to get through them just fine. I occasionally have to take the helm when it gets real powerful and, and drive for a while, but um, we handle them all just fine. So uh, you begin to build your comfort level to higher levels than you're used to and stretch your, stretch your um, your limits in your backyards and you know 
once you stretch your limits in your backyard, and then that comes becomes your backyard. It's, uh, they don't, they're not elastic. They don't go back. So it's a, it's a great adventure so far. It's a great experience. I got to thank a lot of people for helping make it happen, especially Jeff and Gay, because well, without their support, uh, this is one huge endeavor. Um, but uh, I think that's about it for now. Later on, I'll take out a chart and uh, we'll talk charts, and I'll show you on a chart where we're at. And, uh, just trying to keep a narrative going.